I've rented four different castles for NaNoWriMo, but this month I'm doing things a little bit differently. I want to make a video and check in with your NaNoWriMo project. Since I have talked a lot about it in the past, uh, I want to hear what you're working on and what you're struggling with. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can finish your NaNoWriMo project and actually get it published. So NaNoWriMo was really helpful for me when I started writing. I think the idea of trying to finish something in a certain amount of time uh, really can help you to get something done. I think 50,000 words is not too big of a challenge. I actually found that 50,000 words was enough to get halfway through a full story for the fantasy that I write, or it was sometimes enough to reach a critical cliffhanger point, which could be end of a shorter series. So I have one fantasy series that's about 50 or 60,000 words, uh, but they end on cliffhangers. And then I have another fantasy series that's like a, a 100,000 or 150,000 words per book. I always struggled with how to take your rough draft and turn it into a real project, how to finish it with a satisfying resolution. And like most authors, I struggled with what to put in the middle, uh, which is why I've got a 24 chapter plot outline. A lot of people use it for their NaNoWriMo prep. I've talked in the past about preparing for NaNoWriMo by creating a strong outline and making sure you know what you want to write. It's very possible to run out of steam but then feel like you just want to hit your word count daily. So you just start making things up even though you know it's not really going to be um, good material that you use in the book. I also think people struggle a lot with once they have a first messy rough draft, getting words down and telling your story uh, is a big challenge. But the stuff that comes after the editing and the revising, the figuring out which, you know, what part of these books are cliche or amateur or basic and how to actually go deeper and make them better. Um, I've got a free course on self-editing that's a bit old. Uh, I'm turning that into, this is one of my newer projects, uh, a new book on writing called Fix Your Fiction, which will be more about the, the editing side of things. I did already put out the plot dot, which was a simple eight point graph with some writing basics. I just updated that with some of the most important writing things that uh, a lot of new authors don't have when they start writing their first draft and then learn later when they're trying to fix it. Um, so the plot dot is free on, on Amazon and there's some good stuff in that. But I also put out Bookcraft, which is a much bigger history of, of magic and creativity, uh, which is a little daunting for a lot of people, but a lot of my best insights are in that book and explained, um, but it's also not quite what everybody wanted or expected. So while I like it a lot, um, I'm now working on Fix Your Fiction, which is going to be basically my writing course. So all of the very practical things that you should know to write good books but with all, without all the, um, the extra fluff that some people enjoy, but some people don't. So I'm hoping it's going to be a much more concise. Uh, I'll talk about the top 100 writing mistakes that new authors make. I'll talk a lot, a lot about um, movies and TV breakdowns. I have a lot of blog material that uh, I've never really put into a book. So right now I'm trying to take some of the material that people haven't seen yet and just organize it into a new book so that, you know, it can help more people. As I mentioned, I'm not really doing NaNoWriMo myself this year, uh, not for any particular reason. I know there have been some controversies and a lot of people are skeptical of NaNoWriMo as a platform right now. Um, but the community aspects of writing in a group of people who have a common deadline and a common goal, kind of giving your per yourself permission, especially in the holidays where we feel like, you know, taking too much time for our own creative pursuits can feel a little bit selfish. Uh, I do think NaNoWriMo as a concept was really useful for a lot of writers, myself included. And going forward, I think a lot of writers are really seeking some place where they can get criticism or critique, ask questions uh, when they get stuck, or even just cheer each other on. Those are aspects that are really hard to deliver because, you know, Facebook doesn't get as much organic reach. Um, I have started, I've thought about starting some kind of a writing community. Uh, sometime in the future, but I'm going to work on my own projects first, kind of cleaning up my backlist. Uh, the projects I'm working on right now, it's a little weird because I have done NaNoWriMo in the past and I'm sitting on almost 10 full manuscripts that need editing. So I don't really need 
more words. I don't need to be putting more words down on the page. I have a lot of content that I need to edit. And that's a little bit of a different um, process and mindset. So I need to do, you know, a lot of hours per day to clean these books up. Uh, and that's still sort of writing, but I'm not necessarily adding new words or figuring out the story. I'm just taking the story I have and trying to make it, you know, a stronger book before I put it out there. That's why I'm not making like daily NaNoWriMo word count goal videos like some other people are doing because they're very committed. And it it is worth trying to create a writing habit where you show up and put words down every day. Uh, that's something I still struggle with, but I tend to bulk things together. So I might work really hard for a couple months and finish a lot of things, and then I'll turn to other projects. So my writing projects, um, I'm revising the 21 day author platform, or really I'm creating it for the first time. It's a bunch of series of videos that I have that I'm transcribing and turning into a book. So it's stuff I've talked about in the past, and this is kind of tricky for me because I feel like I've said everything that I can say about writing and publishing and book marketing, but there's a lot of people who haven't heard my advice. Uh, and since I haven't been active for a long time, I think I checked and I only have like seven videos on YouTube this year. So I'm gonna to try to put out a bunch of new videos, you know, this in the next month or two, just because I should be producing more content because new writers, I, I still get a lot of people who say like, you know, I followed you when I started a long time ago and it was really useful, but I'm worried that new writers aren't gonna find my material if I'm not making new content. And I'm better at this stuff than I was when I began. So all of the things that I know, I'm probably gonna be able to explain them better and I'll have higher level insights and tips into publishing and marketing um, than I had when I first started. So I am working on the 21 day bestselling author platform. Uh, I do wanna finish Fix Your Fiction and maybe a hundred publishing questions answered. Some of the little projects I started a long time ago and put out something uh, that I would like to be better. It's kind of a good time to go back through and reflect and clean some stuff up. Uh, it was interesting, I went to Vegas last week and I saw a lot of the people that I had started with 10 years ago at a conference in Austin. Um, and then there was another one in Cleveland. So pretty early in the self-publishing days, I was on the circuit as like a book cover designer. Um, and I've spoken about different things over the years. I've been to a lot of writers conferences, so I'm gonna make a separate video on that. Uh, but it felt kind of cathartic to come to a conference um, and see people that I first met, you know, 10 years ago, and we're still all writing books and talking about publishing. These are the people who have stuck around uh, or the people who have, you know, done very well publishing. So it's always nice to reconnect and see, you know, what we're working on. But all the nonfiction book um, and the videos and stuff that I do, I like helping other authors, but like most authors, I would love to just be writing my fiction. So I'm making a little bit of space and trying to clean up my platform so that most of next year I can continue focusing on my fiction. Uh, I started a YouTube channel that's doing pretty well, separate from this one. Um, I won't tell you about it because it's a different audience, but I'm trying to, I've done a lot of books over the last six or seven years. I think I have like 20 novels, but I only have one completed vampire series. What I'm working on right now, I think is the fifth book in my Greek mythology series, which um, is published, but I wasn't quite happy with the ending. So probably a few more days of work, but I've been putting it off for a long time. I need to finish the last chapter and make sure I'm happy with that ending before I can write the sixth book uh, and that'll finish up that series. I also am sitting on um, a dystopian vampire ice trilogy where I have the first book and it's pretty good. I'm not dissatisfied with any of it, but I think it can be stronger. So it's a little bit of that, you know, final phase of editing where you are making sure all the things that happen really have enough intrigue and motivation and suspense. Like all the, all the stuff happens, the, the story is fine. There's just not the, the mystery or the drama which mostly comes from emotional reveals and character motivation. That book to finish up, um, I have book two in an angel fantasy, kind of a dark academia um, that's halfway done. So I have to finish the second half of that second book and then book three. And I have an alien dystopia also where book one is done and I'm halfway through book two. So I have to finish book two, book three. And then I have like five other series where I have a book one and I need to write books two and books three.
So, you know, a lot of books that I need to work on. Um, I am emboldened by the fact that there are some new AI tools that might allow me to finish books a little bit faster. I've been waiting basically for um, tools to be able to learn my style. So I can upload book one and it can learn my writing style and all my characters and everything. And I can give it the outline for book two and it can continue the story in my voice with my characters. Um, AI is not quite there yet, but I think it will be next year. And since I do have a lot of projects I've started, uh, I'm excited about the potential opportunity. Although personally, I haven't found it to you know be good enough yet. I fully expect it to be better next year and I wanna make sure I can take advantage of that. Um, I know there is some controversy about AI, but the, the thing I like about, or the thing that I am trying to do um, is not, you know, take my messy rough draft and make it much better in somebody else's style. Uh, I want, I'm not aiming for someone else's style. I want my style. I just want to get the rough draft done a little bit faster because I'm more of a developmental editor and I know that I can do the heavy lifting if I can just get the, the first basic draft of the story down. So I am excited about finishing series. Things get a lot easier when you finish series. I think I've sold about 100,000 books, but I haven't really made a lot of profit with my books, um, I tend to earn in other forms online with a lot of tools or courses or templates or resources. But like I mentioned, I do have one finished series and that I found that I can advertise and break even and then make money on the audiobooks or make money on YouTube ads. A lot of authors, and I'll probably make another video about this specifically, but a lot of authors right now are struggling to make book sales alone work as a business model and they're looking at Kickstarter or direct direct sales or you know landing pages, subscriptions. A lot of authors are moving towards other forms of income that aren't just, you know, KDP, Amazon ebook publishing. I do know that like if I can make a thousand bucks a month from from this one series, if I can finish five series next year and then ten series the next the year after, um, there comes a point, I see a lot of people struggling with, you know, making a living as a writer and even a lot of very successful, famous, traditionally published authors are also struggling and getting day jobs or, you know, things aren't working like they, they used to. So there are some people who are, who are doing well, but a lot of people really aren't. Uh, there's always an opportunity to find a new avenue to reach a broader market if other people you know, haven't invested in that platform hard enough. So there's still a chance. I'm confident that there's still a lot of opportunities for me to um, start making more money with my books because I tend to have um, out of the box, strategic, creative thinking. So can't really do anything until I have more books out. It doesn't make a lot of sense to be spending a lot of money or growing my platform, um, you know, when I don't have completed series, but when I have several completed series, I will be able to vamp things up pretty quickly. So a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about for five or 10 years, it's a little annoying because I see other people with more books doing very well with my strategies. And I would love to be able to say, you know, I'm making millions with my books also, but uh, I'm not. I don't think it's necessarily very common or very realistic. So don't really feel any sense of like imposter syndrome. It is um, a little frustrating that you know, after all these years, my fiction is not making money, but I don't feel it's because, um, you know, there's something that I don't understand or I, I'm not figuring out the marketing. I just don't have enough books for it to really work out in the way that it will in the future. That's not to say that if you have more and more books, like if you just keep writing and ignore the marketing, that someday everything will just happen for you. Uh, it does take some work to build a platform. I have invested a lot of time and effort building a platform so that when I launch books, you know, it gets easier. The problem is if I'm only launching, you know, two or three books a year, I tend to not email very often or not make content. Um, so I've seen a lot of my platforms kind of drop off in terms of engagement or traffic. Um, and when I have completed series, I'll need to build all of that back up. So a lot of the things I talk about in like the 21 day bestselling platform or Gorilla Publishing or on YouTube or whatever, um, they're strategies that will work if you do everything right and if you have enough, enough content. But for a lot of authors, if you didn't get the cover right, if you don't have enough reviews yet, um, if you've only got one book, then it may feel overwhelming to build a big platform or try to figure out ads when the truth is it probably won't work for you 
yet. It doesn't mean it doesn't work or it's not valuable or useful. You may still want to be doing those things to prepare yourself for the future because there's also a learning curve where, you know, it may take you a year or two to get comfortable enough to be just posting content or updating your blog. So you want to start so that you have the skills, even if no one's really paying attention uh, in the beginning. So that's my NaNoWriMo project, kind of. I'll be trying to edit and finish a book in 10 days, a nonfiction book. Uh, and if I'm lucky, you know, possibly in a day or two, I could finish up uh, those last little details of the two almost finished novels that I'm sitting on. That would be great because I haven't had fiction come out in a while, but mostly I'm working on some nonfiction stuff and projects uh, right now. I'll go back to Taiwan in a couple of weeks. I've got December over there. I'll probably do a lot of, um, nonfiction stuff, books or courses or templates. There's still a lot of things I've started a long time ago that I'm, you know, struggling to finish. Um, but then I hope by about January, instead of, you know, NaNoWriMo in November this year, I might have 12 months of writing and finish 10 books or so uh, next year. That's kind of what I'm hoping. Uh, I have been doing this for a while. I have written a lot of books. Um, so I sometimes share what I'm working on on YouTube, but I'd also like to hear uh, what you're working on or what you're struggling with. If you're doing NaNoWriMo this year, why or why not? What book projects you're working on, etc. cetera. Um, I'd like to see more of, of your comments so that I can get a feel for, you know, what we're all working on. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.